people, my name is Lee Higdon, and I will be discussing with you today how to develop a research question. And we're going to use the PICO and Finer method of doing that. And that is described by a fellow named Hayes and also Huey. So I don't want to take any credit for this. I actually got this information from their works. But structuring a research question is the most critical step in uh, trying to develop a research question. And what I want to share with you today is the PICO and the FINER. But let's start with the PICO first. And the PICO part of this acrostic is going to be the population. So the population is going to be who we're going to study. You also may be something specific to what you're interested in as well. The intervention, the, the intervention is going to be if you were like if this is like a randomized control trial, it's going to be what are you actually going to be investigating in your study? And then it might hold true that if you have the C for a the comparison or it actually could be the control group. So, what would that? What? What are you actually? What's the the, the standard uh, the standard of care currently, and how we're going to change that moving forward, possibly with the intervention that we would like to study. And then the outcome is going to be that variable of which we're going to measure. Um, and it's got to be something that you can actually um, quantify in some form or fashion. And then another part, some of the PICO, some, sometimes PICO comes also with a T, which is for time. And uh, that could be how long we're going to do our follow-up or, or how long we're going to uh, continue to uh, watch these patients over time. So let's take that and we'll actually come up with an example. And with the example for this, let's use uh, an obstetrical uh, topic. So let's use, the, uh, maybe we have a question like, um, maybe we want to try to find out how to reduce wound infection for C-section uh, in obese patients. So let's try to figure out, let's use our um, PICO acrostic again. So the population here may be uh, uh, obese patients that have a uh, BMI of um, greater than 30. So that would be what our population of women may be. The uh, intervention would be closure, possibly with, uh, with suture material. And our control would be we're currently, the standard of care is closing with uh, staples. And then the outcome, the outcome would be uh, percent wound infection and then the time we'll put time we'll call the time would be we're going to follow up with these patients uh, six weeks uh, post-op and okay the question then may look like among women uh, presenting for a c-section with a BMI greater than 30 is are the wound infections reduced in those closed with suture versus staples and then to to further go on with the finer, with the finer acrostic, let's see if we put that together in here right quick. So the finer acrostic, the F is for um, 
is it feasible from our question that we just talked about is it going to be feasible do we have the uh, possibly there would be do we have enough volume do we have enough volume of patients here to take care of that the I would be uh, uh, interesting is this going to be an interesting subject to look at and who would be interested in it you know is this important to the obstetric community N is going to be novel is this is this a novel topic uh, I think there's probably a lot of folks out there that have been studying this but you'd have to do a literature review literature review to answer this question And then the E is going to be, is it, uh, is it ethical to do such a study? Uh, you know, we'd have to question that. We've done some of these, uh, we've done a study very similar to this with Dr. Nufalpati and uh, uh, both Dr. Christy Lee and Dr. Jill Lee. And then lastly uh, would be, is this, is this relevant? And I think any time that you're trying to, you know, reduce the percent of uh, wound infection, it would probably be relevant. So in closing, uh, what I've tried to do is give you a framework of which you can construct your research question for if you do not have a good research question, there's no way that you can have good sound footing to get started in your research project. And uh, hopefully this will give you some tips that will benefit you in that process. Thank you very much.